Hey, what is going on? It's Evan here. And today we're going to be taking a look at how to create this effect using Vellum in Houdini. And what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be looking at the project that I already have that I used to make that video instead of starting from scratch. And that way I'll be able to go a lot faster. It won't be just a lot of wasted time um, on unrelated things. So of course, the uh, first thing that we that we need to look at is the mocap. And this is just from Mixamo. And I'm not really going to be covering mocap in this tutorial, but um, to, like simplified, all you really need is this character import. And then, oops, I didn't mean to do that. Let me undo that. There we go. Yep. So all you really need is your your FBX character import, and then you just need bone deform. And then once you connect those two together, and let me actually frame that, and then you're going to see the guy, or you're going to actually get your mocap in here. Now, the reason why I have extra nodes here is because uh, I think uh, I needed to loop it. But the problem is, is that the starting position wasn't the same as the ending position. So I just did a whole bunch of extra stuff over here just to be able to loop it. But like I said, this isn't really a mocap um, tutorial. This is more of a vellum tutorial. So we can look at that maybe some other time if there's a need for that. But something that we do need is that we need a static frame. And the reason why is because we need to do the groom on a, of course, a static frame. And then we'll add the animation later. And so that's the reason why I'm grabbing this. Cause if you grab this output from your, your um, mocap source, it's just going to be a still frame in a T pose, which is nice. That's what we need. And then there's one other thing that I'm gonna do is I'm going to, I'm gonna drop a null here. And the reason why I do it capitalized is cause if you capitalize the letters, uh, then it'll show up first. Like if I'm, if I, let me just show you, if I drop down an object merge node really quickly and I go here, uh, it's going to show, oh, actually I'm, I'm in the wrong network. Let me see, where are we? Mocap set up. No, that was right. It's going to show up at the top of the list right here because I have it capitalized. See where it says out static. That's what this is. And so that's just a cool little trick. Then the other thing that we need is we need a VDB for collisions. So I'm just going to use a, a VDB from polygons. Now you need to make sure that your mesh is airtight. So you might have to use a fuse or a fuse node or do something else to clean it up a little bit. But I'm also going to do another out and then I'm just going to do, do out VDB. So we've got two. Uh, we're going to be referencing two main things from this network. Well, I suppose three. Uh, we have our out static are uh, out mesh in a static pose. And then we have the out VDB of the static pose. And then we have the out of the animation, which we'll be gathering or we'll be using that later. So I'm going to go back out. And the first thing that we need is a source for the guide groom. All right, so let's go ahead and grab this static, the static frame that we that we need. So I'm going to go inside my geometry network and all this is the object merge. And you can see I'm just grabbing that static pose that we had. So that'll be good. And let me go back out. And so the node that we actually need to create the guides is guide groom. And it's, it's actually fairly simple to use. It has a whole bunch of settings like density, scatter seed, relax iterations. Usually I change this up because that seems to give um, better results the higher it is usually. But sometimes if it, it can take a while, especially if you have um, a lot of here. I think it's not updating because I'm probably viewing a cached node on the inside. Yeah, yeah, it's because I have a cached node right there, so it's not actually viewing anything. But if I were to actually come here and drop down a null and stick it on the guides, then you could see it would actually update whenever I change. Oops, it's defaulting to the out. Yeah, that's right, because it defaults to that out. Well, never mind, or that output right there. Um, and then we also need the the VDB too. So the, let's see, for the VDB source, by default, it's going to create its own, but I'm just going to grab the, the VDB path that we set up. If you remember, we, we have that VDB out, and so we're just going to use that um, for the VDB instead of calculating it inside this node. And let me just quickly attach this to the guys just so we can see the direct output. And so now we can actually see this will change what we're doing. Uh, the, what I was saying about the relax iterations before is that you seem to get more even results if you have it at a higher number, the relax iteration. And then, of course, you just have your scatter seed. And I'm not going to be going over all this stuff because I just uh, because this is stuff you can figure out on your own. I just want to get the uh, the things I'm going to talk about are just the main things that um, that are important to actually getting this to work. Whereas like scatter seed and stuff like that, that's just stuff you can mess around with on your own time. 
Oh, let's see. So the the first thing that we're going to do is we need to actually get the hair in this rest position. And I did that using the sculpt with physics uh, brush. And it's actually really easy. I'll just drop down another one really quickly. Um, and that's just using the guide groom node. The guide groom or the guide groom node has lots of different modes on it. And so the mode that we want is going to be sculpt with physics. And by default, you can just drag this. If Yeah, actually, I can just do it here. You can drag it in. You can see that it will automatically connect all of the nodes together. Um, and so you could go to brush options really quickly. And you can you need to make sure you switch to your handles tool. So you can see the brush here. And if you have simulation mode set to settle, that's good. And then we could just do live simulation. And it may take a second the first time uh, you use the tool. You can see that it's actually going to just settle on its own. You don't have to do anything other than click the live simulation button. Now, of course, if there are things you don't like, like for instance, that's a little bit strange, you can always take the brush and I, I, my brush isn't very strong. That's why it's not doing a lot right now, but you can actually go and brush it and see you can brush it in real time with real time physics, which is cool. And so that's that's essentially how I got the hair to look like that. And I don't need this note anymore, so I'm going to delete it because I already have one here. And so I cache this out. Oh, yeah. Uh, one thing I wanted to point out was a glitch. The reason why I have this attribute copy, it's probably going to be patched. Um, it actually may be patched in this version of Houdini. I'm not sure I'm using. Yeah, I'm using uh, uh, 0.511. Um, but I think when I actually made this, I was using an earlier version. And you may have an earlier version, too. But the reason why I have this attribute copy is because there was a glitch with the when you when you switch the guide groom to sculpt with physics mode, uh, it was accidentally deleting an attribute that you need that's required for the groom. Uh, let me see. So if I middle mouse click this, you can see there's skin prim, uh, skin prim UV and squid or uh, skin query P. And so if I middle mouse click here, you can see that none of that was saved, even though it's grabbing the output of this node. And for some reason, it's not getting carried over. Uh, I did contact side effects and they said that they would patch it. But basically what the attribute copy node does is it just copies those attributes back from here. And so now if I middle mouse click this again, you can see that I've recovered those attributes. So you need to make sure you have those, otherwise it won't work. So after you do that, now you have the hair in a natural rest state. We can proceed to the next step. The next thing that we need to do is the guide deform node. The guide deform, it's going to, it's this isn't the simulation step. This is just going to get the motion. Um, this is just going to get the motion. Uh, let me see what error I'm getting. Sorry about that. There's, I just need to let a node cook. Uh, it should be working now. Yeah, there you go. So back to what I was saying before, this is just going to give the raw motion uh, from the mocap onto the hair. So it's not going to be simulated. So it's going to look very strange. It's going to look very strange. Um, but let me go into the anim really quick. Uh, there is something that I did here. Let me see. What I did here was I imported the motion capture, but I wanted it to start at a frame where, actually not a frame, what I wanted to do is I wanted to lift the character off the ground and then lower the character so that the hair can settle properly on the ground. I took a static pose and then I raised it up just a little bit. And, and then I just used a blend shape so I could blend between these two um, different poses. And so that way the hair can start at a higher point and then just lower to the ground. Um, and so then we're going to plug that into the last input here. And then that's going to actually, that's going to be what's required to get this to work. So the next part is to use simulation is we need to do the simulation. Uh, there's actually a guide sim node that you can use to do the simulation, but I wanted to, I wanted to set up to be a little bit more manual. So I set that up myself. But I still use the node, but what I did was instead of using a dop, well, actually, I did use external simulation, which means that the simulation is going to be grabbed from elsewhere. So if you want if you want a very simple solution, you can use the built-in simulation um, that this node does. It's, it's way easier than what I did. But if you want to build it yourself like what I did, then you could just follow me. Um, I, set, I set the source to Zop node, and then this is just a path going to where I set up the simulation. But we actually need to see how that's set up. And I set that up in this geometry network right here called Guide Sim. All right, so we need to actually import the groom so that we can use it for simulation. And so this path right here, um, if it's, you can find that quite easily, you just go into the guide to form and then it's just the out groom right there. So if I go back to the Guide Sim, we can see that this is just the, oh, that's a heavy. 
All right, and so to actually get the guides into the simulation, we could use the unpack groom. And then if we use the animated guides output, then we can get the guides in the first pose right there. And the first node that I have is a vellum hair node. This is just what you use to set up the hair constraints. So I'm going to click on that really quickly. And most of the things are, I use the default settings. Actually, if you go here and you type in configure, uh, well, actually, let me just type in here really quickly. If you type in uh, vellum configure here, you can actually get that already set up for you right there. So you don't have to worry about manually inputting anything. And then there was one other thing that I wanted to add. We need to actually pin the hair to the animation um, that it has on itself, on the curves itself. So if we use pin, or actually, I'm sorry, create a vellum constraints node and uh, set that to pin the target. And then we want to constrain the roots group. Uh, I think by default, the groom tools creates a group called roots, which is just where each point is constrained to the skin. Or, I'm sorry, it's the point on the hair that's closest to the skin. It's called roots. So we can grab that and then we can use pin to animation. And then we could just set this to permanent and then make sure match animation is checkmarked. And then once you run that through the vellum solver, uh, let me just go to the cache because I think I have it cached. Yeah, nice. So now I have that cached out and playing. So that's looking pretty good. And instead of, uh, because the vellum simulation has a whole bunch of extra attributes and unnecessary data we don't need, what I do is I just do an attribute copy and I'm just copying um, data back onto the original points. But of course it's animated. So I, I use a time shift node so that it's just a st uh, static frame. And then I use the attribute copy. And the cool thing is, is that if you turn on match P attribute, it'll actually, like if I turn that off, you can see it goes back to the still frame. But if I turn on match P, it'll actually uh, copy the position from the animated curves back on to the, um, what's it called? Onto our original curves over there that have been frozen to frame one. So that's cool. Uh, let's see. And so then I'm just going to do out groom right there. Just another null without groom capitalized. And then the reason why I capitalize that, as I said earlier, just so it's easier to grab. And so if you remember in the guide sim, that's the um, node that we're looking for to grab our animated curves out groom right there. So then the only other thing to do is to add the hair generation. And once you add the hair gen, that's going to generate here based off of the, the input guides that you just created. And of course, uh, let me go back to general. Where is the setting? Yeah, if you want your skin VDB that we set up earlier, we can go find that here too. Um, that way you'll actually get correct collisions if you decide to do anything inside this network, which uh, I don't think. The only thing I did here is I shifted it forward just a little bit. But that's basically the setup. That, that's all there really is to it. And what I did was I, I rendered this in Redshift. Um, I'm not going to be covering that today. But... If you're using a third party renderer, like not Mantra, uh, most likely you're going to have to go to, uh, where is it? I'll find it eventually. Oh, right here where it says render. Instead of using generate geometry and Mantra, you need to use, uh, use SOP geometry. The other option is if you want to generate the curves at render time using Mantra. But like I said, since I'm using Redshift, or if you're using another renderer, then you can switch this to use SOP geometry. And then you will be able to render it, the curves directly. Um, so that's pretty much all there is to it. If there's any questions, just let me know in the comments. Anyway, thanks for watching.